Hey, welcome to another Startup Sack podcast, um, where we do interviews with Sacramento startup founders and innovators. Today, I'm with Stefan and Chris, who are the founders of Two Wires. Two Wires Lab. Two Wires Lab, and also the product. They mer- they're most well known for their product, Pod Pie. So, I want to welcome you guys to the podcast, and let's start off as we always do with you introducing yourselves and what your backgrounds are, and then we'll get into your startup. Okay, I'm Stefan. Good. <laughs> I've been a software engineer for oh, 30 plus years, uh-huh. and I worked um, as a database engineer for Oracle, a large company, and then over the last 12 years, I started my own consulting company. Okay. And I'm Chris, and I'm at home with my kids and an artist, so always trying to get my hands on whatever I can make. And now I'm writing stories. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys founded, so let's go and just talk about so what is your startup and how, what was the origin story of the startup? So the way it started is one day my six-year-old asked me if we could build a robot. And I thought, yeah, sure, I have an electronics background, so I dusted off my, uh, my, um, my books. And all I did that, that day is put a, a, an LED and flashing LED, and I would never forget. It was like this was a brand Christmas. new, um, yeah, this was a brand new world that opened for him. Mm-hmm. And when I saw that, I thought, you know, instead of just doing it here, uh, just the two of us, how about we we set up a meetup group and we have other kids come in and we'll teach them robotics and all this. And this was before STEM was all the the rage. And what year was this? What it was, oh, that must have six, seven, seven years ago, yeah. uh, something like that. And so we set up a, a meetup. I didn't think it would uh, have any any success. I thought if we get five or five or six kids, it would be great. And the first meetup group, we had forty five kids Whoa. that came with their parents. So there was about a hundred people, and at the Hacker Lab uh-huh. and downtown here in Sacramento. Shout out to Hacker Lab. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it was uh, we were not prepared for that. It was chaotic. It uh-huh. was, um, but we said we said to do it. And so two weeks later, we had the next session, and then two weeks later, the next session, and it kept on growing. Wow. And so at some point, it was just, it was becoming very difficult to host the sessions. Mm-hmm. We had new kids coming in, we had kids that were advanced, and it, it was difficult. So we started making different groups, but even so, we'd be at the Kaka Lab at 7 o'clock in the morning on Saturday until 4 o'clock on Saturday, just nonstop with three or four different groups. So we decided this is... And then back again on Sunday. Uh, so it started <laughs> off as a kind of an event, actually. Um, yes. Workshops or or, group, or classes uh, mm-hmm. with kids. Um, and at some point, it started evolving, right? So how did that happen? So at some point, it was just not sustainable, not scalable any, mm-hmm. anymore. And I remember distinctly, I, w- I was teaching a class with the old format, so... And just the way I do it, work PowerPoint, and I'm talking to the kids, and I'm watching them, and, they, and I'm explaining something very important that I need to get. But I'm watching them, so what I was talking, I'm watching them, and I got another thread in my head saying, "This is not fun. They're not getting this. Mm-hmm. I need to do. I need to do something very different." And that night, we start thinking about the format, and I said, "This is not working. I mean, they're having fun at the workshop, but they're not getting the the stuff I'm trying to teach." Mm-hmm. How can we do this? And this is where we thought, how about something where we inject comic books or something? I mean, it was not books. It was just comic character. Or it was a story on screen. More, yes, yeah, story versus a, versus just like the technical details. Mm-hmm. And something that they could follow in order to, to do it themselves. So we didn't need to be there. We could just be there to help but not, not teach. Mm-hmm. That evolved into uh, a console um, think about a little, like not a PlayStation or something like that, where you plug in uh, smart pods in it, and these pods will monitor what the kids are doing. So if they're learning about digital electronics or analog electronic sensors, we would monitor what they're doing in real time. Mm-hmm. And on the screen, you would have a comic book that comes to life. We could they could interact with the characters in real time, mm-hmm. and that. So we developed something like that, and it was pretty cool. We thought, great, we put it on Kickstarter. And, <laughs> It's gonna work right it's it's fun but in testing it and seeing the kids it was audio visual the kids loved it mm-hmm. but when I looked at the kids they were there with their headphones and it was almost like a, a line of robots just on front of computers <laughs> and like this and I said this is not what I want this is not I want this to be 
collaborative. I mm-hmm. wanted the kids to help each other. I wanted them to figure things out. This was too hand-holding almost. And so we had invested quite a bit in, in time and, and money developing that, and we just scrapped it. <laughs> so that's a big pivot. So that was that's a pivot, a pivot. I mean, yes. From what I remember, you guys were heavily focused on, on tech. teaching tech and, and mm-hmm. JavaScript and, and coding. And at that point, you realized that that wasn't what you wanted, and you made a pivot. What we didn't want was... It was a safe environment. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, it was. It we were. I'm a tech guy, so uh-huh. I'm passionate about technology. So I came up with a solution that involved tech. Uh-huh. And what I realized is, is we didn't allow the kids to fail, because we were in control of what they were doing. We were in control of the the story and, and all the elements per se. And there's a fine line between educating and entertaining. Uh-huh. And I thought we felt. We fell on the side of entertaining and not educating because mm-hmm. once we got the kids back a month later we asked them questions and they remember the characters or they did not remember what we taught them mm-hmm. so then we went and printing a, a comic book instead we tested it with a different set of kids and a month later we asked them to come back and we asked them the same questions and the first thing that i realized was that when the kids came back <laughs> the books were all trash. They were all written into. Um, it was, it, yeah, they were not like this. It was, and the first thing the kids ask is, "Can we have a new one?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's when I thought, okay, they're used this. It was, that's what I wanted. I want something physical, something that can they can get their hands on, something that can learn. And then we ask them questions, and and it's like they studied this thing on the way to school. I know some kids got in trouble because they were reading the magazine <laughs> after bedtime. Uh, that's when I thought, okay, this is this is what we want to pursue, and not not this electronic. Uh... And I think one of the things that made it work really well too is, you know, here they're using real LEDs, and if they put it in the wrong way, it won't light up. Mm-hmm. So there's that element of trial and error, mm-hmm. and I think we learn a lot more when we have to work for it. If it's just spoon fed us. So is there still any electronics component to this, or is it all absolutely. just okay? Oh, so absolutely. What's, how is that like now? What's in fact, if, if we we're in their lab here right, right now, yeah, um, so I don't know which one this is, but let's let's see what box this is. See what Get this a is. demo. So it comes in a treasure box like this uh, okay. every month. It's a subscription, or you, you can buy all the boxes. It comes in a treasure box, so the kids open the treasure box. It has the book in it. Okay. And then it has all the the different components. So you have electronic components, you have an Arduino board, the new ones are coming in a little treasure box as well. And they're Arduino boards. Okay. So we now we manufacture our own. This was the uh, very this was the very first one, I think that's why we have it here. All right here in your workspace. <laughs> uh, actually so we have been manufacturing. Okay. We started reselling some existing ones and now we're making we made our own branded branded board so they okay. come in a so it's more of a companion comic book along with the electronics to work together right, right. so do you have the this is the your lesson book mm-hmm. but it, instead of just a lesson there's a story what we've seen is, is today we're teaching kids via step by step let me just give no little, little tangent but six years or seven years ago when we started those meet up what i liked about this is the kids would come in and they would just try things. I mean, we didn't even start. The batteries were hot. The, the LED would 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 explode. I mean, they they <laughs> were not afraid. Would escape. <laughs> yeah, they were not afraid to try something. Uh-huh. Fast forward 2017, when we host the meetup right now, when we get new kids in, they just sit down and they wait to be told what to do. Mm. A lot of them won't try something. So something has changed over the last six or seven years. So what we did is in, instead of teaching them step by step, do this, do this, and where it's very safe, we give them, we replaced it with, with a story. Mm-hmm. So now they have to read the story, and as part of the story, they have to help the characters. It's kind of like an adventure they go on. And, mm-hmm. oh, okay, cool. And that's why it's called a Pod Pie. It's the island of Pod Pie. Do you have a, a, the map there? Oh, we have okay, it right so here. That's a, I was going to ask that. What is the map? Okay, so Pod, so there, Pod Pie is a mythical island in the story. It is. Mm-hmm. It it was, it was. Remember when I said we built this console? Uh-huh. It was supposed to be little pods that you plug in, uh-huh. and it was powered by a Raspberry Pi. So okay. that's where the name uh, came from. Pie. But then we threw that away. But by that time, we had the characters, we had the island, we had all the concepts, so we kept the the name. So. It, it may not mean anything and right now it's it's the name of the island so this island has different beaches 
I don't know if we can see it. I'm good at a flat one too. <laughs> you, have, uh, you have a learning beach. This is where the clouds go to learn. You have create. This is where once you learn concepts, you can make something, you know, like the jewelry she's yeah. wearing. She's, we want to show the kids that you learn this skill so that you can make something with it. Uh, measure, this is electronics. A lot of stuff has to be a certain way. You can just make things up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, capture, this is a land of sensors mm -hmm. where we get information and we do something with it and for example it's so this, the land of iot yes yes actually uh yes volume 11 this is the first volume where they're actually sending data in real time to the cloud and they can they can sense it so they have a little uh they have three different sensors one is with a plant moisture sensor uh -huh. they put it in the plant and we show them all the way how to have the plant tweet them when the plant is either drowning or is thirsty or something like that. And, and so they're actually making that. They're actually yes. making, and that's actually working in the real world with, with Twitter and the internet. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now this is uh, volume 11, which is number 12 <laughs> in the series because we started at zero. And once they go through all of this, they have the, the skills to. So what age this. group is this, is this targeted at? We target nine to 14. Mm -hmm. We've seen that we have some younger ones and some older ones, but that's really the the, the target. And we have a few adults there. We know our <laughs> subscribers that don't have kids. <laughs> Interesting. So it's been kind of a long journey. You've made some pivots. Um, yes. What are some of the key lessons learned in this journey? You want to take that one? Oh. Um, well, I think one of the things that we've discovered along the way is that since the designer that, that does our drawings and I who write the stories are not technical, we have to get the concepts in order to get them across to the kids. So once we do, the kids usually get it. So I think that's kind of a key a key thing there. Um, other lessons, everything takes a lot longer than you think it's going to. Well, and I was just thinking, there's a, operationally, you guys, for a small startup, you're just you two, essentially, right? Three. So we have a designer. So okay. it's, I do all the technical work. Chris writes the story and does all the fulfilling of okay. the orders. And then we have a talented graphic artist in Florida uh -huh. that we never met. <laughs> We've never even Skyped. Oh, We've really? We've talked to him on the phone like twice. <laughs> we talked to him on the phone a few times, but he's very talented. He's an amazing, amazing guy. He's very, very young. This uh -huh. is his first full-time job. Awesome. And uh, we're having a blast working with him. But it, yeah, it's just the just the three of us. Yeah, but, but operationally, logistics, there's a lot to do for this. Uh, <laughs> and you're doing the there fulfilling is. and sending these things out, and um, that's got to be a challenge. It's been uh, it's been some long nights, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then to go back to what you were saying, it, it, I think in the technical realm, a lot of techies have a hard time explaining something mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in, I would say, in terms that people understand. and. Even some adults look at this and say, oh, no, this is technical. I, I don't want to do this. But we we designed this in a, in a way that, yeah, if you understand it, if Jay, our mm -hmm. artist, understands it, we know that the kids will understand it. So it's a it's a way to make this uh, not too technical. So there's, again, a line to cross, not to cross where where it's not too technical, but it's also not so dumbed down that it doesn't right. make sense. And what comes to my mind right now is if you thought about doing this for more of an adult audience. Yes, so um, we're working on that. So now we have 13 magazines. We're gonna take a break and we're working on a concept. I can't say too much about it, but we're working on a concept that is, think, um, you know, Amazon Echo and Alexa. Uh -huh. So how do you program a new skills for Alexa? Huh. And so we're gonna do this, but in, term, in, in a format that is, is the same thing, it's also graphic novel, uh -huh. but with a mu more mature content, okay. more mature um, design, very different storyline. Okay. So more for teens and young and adults. adults. Cool. That's be really cool. So talking about the start of the business aspect a little bit, yes. what's what's the revenue model and, and where are you at business wise as far mm -hmm. as um, the business uh, make are you earning revenue? Are you looking for funding from from VCs and angels? Uh, so we're bootstrapped. Uh -huh. We, um, the company Two Wires Labs started, what it was in January or February 2016, mm -hmm. so about 20 months. We are just about to cross into cash flow positive. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, there's still some debt to pay <laughs> off, uh -huh. but from a monthly perspective, we're, we're getting close. We were, yeah, self-funded bootstrap, friends and family, uh -huh. mainly. 
Um, I did take some time off to get this rolling. Like you said, mm -hmm. it was it's, it was a big endeavor. A lot of your own equity plus a lot, a lot of sweat equity. Yes. Yeah. So the designing the, this island, designing all the content we wanted, and uh, Lydia went back to to consulting, but. Now, between Chris and our designer, we have enough content that they can uh -huh. like, create that. But it was, it was a lot of long nights. Yeah, a lot of sweat equity. Still in. a lot of long nights. <laughs> yeah. And they said, we just finished all of our summer camps mm -hmm. and the schools. Of, of, we added about 20 schools over the last, I would say, three to four, four months. months yeah. wow. so, so you're that, pretty embedded in the school system here? No, it's been just... It's growing. Yeah. It's been very difficult. We haven't, we haven't from a from a business model. You were asking, we targeted end users and subscriptions. Okay. So it's a subscription model, where every month or whatever schedule you want, mm -hmm. we, we ship this out. When we tried to get into the schools, some schools told us we get bombarded by so many um, similar programs that we just don't respond anymore we don't have a capacity to respond mm -hmm. so we decided we're just going to step back and 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 see where it goes but then the, i think the parents and Some also the teachers the teachers that have seen this and maker fairs have been really good mm -hmm. all the events have been we've been to um some principals have seen what we're doing they said this is exactly what we were looking for and so now it's um some schools have it during their curriculum mm -hmm. some schools have it during the after school programs we have some private schools. We have one in Canada that just bought mm -hmm. most of the all the modules, and so we've been growing completely organically. Yeah, it's word of mouth. So you know, we started in one school, and then they talk to another school, and they order, and so it's really been just word of mouth. Well, hopefully this <laughs> increases that <laughs> uh, echo chamber a little bit. Um, so we've seen you guys out, I've seen you guys out in the community quite a bit. You you pitched at One Million Cups mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you were at a, a Hacker Lab event at, uh, in Rancho Cordova and I think I'm sure at more. Um, so I'm just kind of curious how, maybe talk about how the Sacramento community has been instrumental in, in helping you succeed, or if it has, mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm assuming it has. It's um, a very small and tight community mm -hmm. here. Um, that's what I like. We're trying to participate in a lot of events. Mm -hmm. on, on one side, over the last six months, I've been a little anti-social. <laughs> been a little busy. <laughs> We've been very busy, so it's, it's balancing be part of something and helping. Um, I love the, the hackathons. Mm -hmm. I love the, the different startups or um, you know, start of grinds and these events. Mm -hmm. But lately, over the last six months, we've not been able to to participate because there's only 26 hours in a day. <laughs> and um, by the way, I got a story about that. My son always tells me, no, there's 24, dad. Check yeah. your phone, it's not 26. It's, <laughs> no, there's, no, there's 26. And he said, how come? I said, well, here's the secret. When you go to bed, I get two extra hours because I get twice as much done. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, yes, the community is very, very good, and there's there's a lot of resources from 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 the Hacker Lab, from uh, Startup Grind, uh, your organization. It, it's amazing. I've, everybody's trying to help each other. Mm -hmm. um, that's been very good. Uh, unfortunately, I wanted to participate more and maybe help other startups as well. Mm -hmm. But it's it's. <laughs> It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, balance. it's a balancing act, right. So, you know, this is very STEM focused and my sense is I see a lot of, and maybe it's just because I'm new to the STEM mm -hmm. arena, but I'm seeing a lot of <coughs> STEM focused initiatives bubbling up in Sacramento here. And I'm, I'm kind of curious what your um, thoughts are on, on where we're at in Sacramento as far as teaching STEM to, STEM to kids and STEM and STEAM both. Hmm. Ah, <laughs> my um, my view is Something more from from a professional <coughs> in the industry in the software and consulting uh -huh. and and doing stuff like that, um, and I have some some strong opinion on that. Um, it goes back to that line between entertainment and education, uh -huh. right? It, we are in a world where we have to make it fun. Um, otherwise, we lose the kids. They're they're not interested, but we don't want to make it so much fun and dumbed down that they're so simple. 
so simple they're not learning um, I'm, we've been so busy designing this and on one side I'm purposely not looking at what else is out there what else is being done because I don't want to be influenced I don't want to copy I don't mm -hmm. want to say oh these guys are doing this therefore we need to do this or no we need to do it different I, I'm trying to do it the way we have a, a vision mm -hmm. I'm trying to be as aligned as how I learned when I was when I was nine. So that's a long time ago. <laughs> there was no internet. There was no books. You had to do everything yourself. But looking back, and I, I just published a um, a blog post on that. During my during my day job, I just solved a, a pretty big problem on on implementing something that I was teaching the kids here. Uh, I made a database hundred times faster because I implemented a component that. Hmm. We're trying to teach the kids here. So it goes back and forth like this. What this is something I'm using at work. I want the kids to understand this. Um, and there's a lot of great programs out there. I have my own opinion on like Minecraft. I mean, is it? Yes, they create something, and I'm sure there's a lot of uh, educational value in it. At the same time, I see my kids doing it, and I'm thinking they're just playing a game. So. It, you know, goes back and back and forth. What we're trying to do here is really provide fundamentals of of uh, not everybody needs the electronic, not everybody needs JavaScript, but it's the concepts I think are really valuable. Mm -hmm. The concept of the way to think, right? <coughs> it, yeah. That's why this, we do the story. It's it's to bring a way to a, a way to think how to solve a problem. I like to say this is not about JavaScript and this is not about electronics. It's about bringing back the Problem solving. That's we're gonna go back to the, the beginning of the episode. We talked about the kids have to help these characters solve problems. So they want to do it because they're in the in the story. Um, it's more about teaching them to think rather than um, to right. solve a particular task. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. And anyway, the story makes it fun. In terms of other other th STEM things, like mm -hmm. like I'm trying not. I'm purposely not up to speed on, mm -hmm. on on all the programs because because I don't want to be influenced either positively or negatively. Okay. That makes <laughs> you know, I guess I ask sense. because there's some organizations that I'm familiar with here, Square mm -hmm. Root Academy, Innovation or Project yes. Innovate, um, Yellow Circle a lot of these uh, they won Rails grants from the city of Sacramento, as did we. Um, and so I know they're just passionate about mm -hmm. teaching kids STEM and STEAM and they've got some initiatives and they want to grow. I'm um, just wondering if there's any kind of a, uh, a groundswell community of STEM education growing or, or if we need to actually create that network for people here um, between so, those those of you who are, who are yes. down in the trenches doing the work. And I, I like the ones you mentioned. I, I've, been, I've been in contact with them. Okay. Um, I've been invited some to participate some, uh, to some of their events mm -hmm. and I'm it's that balancing act, right? Yeah, but you know, <laughs> you don't have to serve the day, right? <laughs> uh, well, the Square Root Academy had a, a couple of months ago. They had an event. I just couldn't participate. Yeah, it was a big I, summit. Yeah, I just couldn't participate. It was we were in the middle of um, one of our best month, and mm -hmm. we need to get stuff out. And oh, it's sure. just so there's a lot of stuff going on, and and I like to see it. I like to see more of it. At the same time. Feel bad because I can't participate. There's only so much and, you can do. Yeah. yeah, and then we're just at that inflection point, and we want to. We're looking at, at our suppliers right now to help us with. Uh, I mean, all these packets we make these ourselves. Right? Mm -hmm. We take all the, the components and this LED and that LED mm -hmm. and that resistor. <laughs> we're at a point where it's bursting as a seam, so we can't. We can continue that, but we're taking the steps to work with our suppliers, and they might be able to okay. do this. So we're we're looking at scaling, which then. Hopefully, <laughs> bring some more time or be able to focus on more um, on the business and and, do, and the, the community rather than than you know making packets like this until, 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 until one o'clock in the morning. But yeah, I do. You know, up to the right now, that's what we we had to do. We had yeah. to do that. I mean, we the drill, we saw it here in. Uh, yeah, we made we made six hundred of these. Place all the little I see a little circuit board there. Yeah. Yes, cool. So we designed these and we, um, Hold we up your little, you've here. got a pamphlet for that. Hold yes. that up so we can get that on the camera. So, and this was a way to um, kind of get the kids more hands-on mm -hmm. also. 
one of our characters, Letty, is an artist, and she's oh, okay. on the LED soap. So this is this crossover. Line. Yes. This is her line of wearables that she's starting. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, and it comes with the materials, and the kids actually get to bend the metal. Oh, cool. And there's some, you know, instructions on how, and a few examples, and just a ton of things they can make with that. Are you guys hooked up with Rocket Department all and their little soldering kit? Yeah. We, we know we're, them. Okay. We, we're not... We okay, I mean, that's just another yet, but... great connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you have time. So. <laughs> yeah, in their spare time. We see them every time we have an event yeah. or um, uh, Maker Fair. They did really well mm -hmm. at Maker mm -hmm. Fair. Um, so and they came out of Hacker Lab too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Out of a hackathon. So great group. Yeah. Uh, love them. And yeah, we've been, over the last six months, we've been just uh, in this room, just working at <laughs> it. So, so as far as what's next, you're going to try to dig out of your workload a little bit. Yes. Um, and scale up and maybe a new product line um, mm -hmm. for adults. Mm -hmm. um, anything else uh, come up on the horizon for you guys? I think the, the so Pot Pie would just finish today. Mm -hmm. um, the <laughs> volume all the edits are done. <laughs> and these characters, they're on this island, they're moving to a new island. And the reason they're moving to a new island is an, an island that's going to be more technologically advanced it's more advanced this was the foundation mm -hmm. we learned the resistors the leds how things are working digital um, computing and, and and sensors now we're going to into they're going to make projects and stuff like that so that, but that's on the back burner until for a little while we have a few different boards that we've made for leddyware mm -hmm. and uh this more we have the programming guide that we're finishing up just Get Almost out. done with that, so they'll be able to reprogram the patterns on the LEDs too. So cool. to learning to code for for that, and then this new um, this new curriculum around Amazon Web Services. Awesome. That's something where we are in the concept phase. Hopefully, we're going to kickstart that next month. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before I forget, I I often, yes. I often forget. Where can people find you? Podpie.com, P-O-D-P-I.com to follow up on, on what's coming up for you guys. And you're on Twitter, I know, and, mm -hmm. and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Any other... Uh, Instagram. Instagram, too? Yeah. Instagram has been very good over the last Is couple of months. Is just Podpie on Instagram? No, uh, Podpie got deleted by Instagram. <laughs> I have no idea what... Oh, we're really? Doing. We're growing about 150 followers a day. Wow. I suddenly did a push... Just Disappeared. <laughs> I don't mean, disappeared. I was in the middle of posting something and the account was gone. So I started again and it's under Arguino, which is our our um So it's instead of Arduino it's Arguino. <laughs> oh okay. Fine. It's a little it's a pirate. <laughs> more uh difficult to, to spell. And I assume you've linked to that on from your website. I so people can find think it. so, yes. Yeah, but we have it's, it's a very different it's like all the teachers are most of the teachers on Twitter and some are on Instagram. It's like every social media platform has its own, its own set of. It's, it's, it's click. It's, yeah, there <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah, yeah. And uh, but but Instagram has been it's been good. Otherwise, uh, our website and we need to work on it. But that's what <laughs> we have right now. That's an hour twenty-seven and twenty-eight, which we haven't found yet. So. <laughs> So wrapping things up, what advice or tips would you have to other uh, um, aspiring mm -hmm. innovators, entrepreneurs, especially in the STEM um, industry, STEM field? Have anything? Uh, I would say just know it's going to take longer than you think, and it's going to require a lot more hours than you expect, but the only way to get there is to stick with it. Perseverance. Persevere. Everybody asks. Persevere. Pretty much says that. Trial and error and perseverance is what we're trying to teach the kids. Uh -huh. yes. So it's a, it's a meta lesson for you guys, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it, yes, it was. And also another one for me is your end product might not be what you started with. or yeah. with, <laughs> When I started with, I had this vision, and, and I'm very technical, and I could see it. I, could, I knew how it was going to work, and mm -hmm. I built towards that. And now I look back, and I'm like... Well, there's, there's, well, there's tech, but now the kids make the tech where we make the story versus this was, it was the opposite mm -hmm. before we build all the tech and the kids were going through the story and said, so what you set up to do, you have to it's pay attention shift. on. You have to pay attention to your market. And that's, that's exactly. a lot of, that's one of the big lessons that I think a lot of founders uh, need to learn early on. And we hear that a lot from people. So that's, that's really good to reiterate. Yeah. Not to be so enamored with your 
concept that you don't see what the but market wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time. I know you thank don't have you. much, but any last <laughs> shout outs or anything you'd like to say to anybody? No. <laughs> <laughs> Go to podpie.com to learn more, right? <laughs> yeah. No, and good luck to everybody that, yeah. that's doing this. It's it's um, This came out of a, a passion. If you have uh -huh. passion for something, uh, don't quit your day job because, like Chris said, it's going to take longer. But that's go after it. It's, it's, it's fun. And, and the best thing for me is when I get an email or a picture from one of our yeah. one of the kids that's doing this or a video of them doing it and the parents saying this. Uh, we had recently a parent that said, this change our lives. Well, so yeah, just the impact that you're having on kids and, and, and ultimately in society could be profound. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our, the best that's part. That's our hope. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, thank you once again. And uh, once again, podpie.com, P-O-D-P-I.com. Thanks again for your time, guys. Thank, thank you, you, Jeff. <laughs>